hey just a note about the following video obviously this is all down to my personal experience the video is quite long so I appreciate your time in watching it um, this week I've been super super fatigued and my brain fog is through the roof so thank you for bearing with me and uh, enjoy the video hey welcome to mama do hope you're doing well I thought today I'd do a rundown of my MS diagnosis and um, you shouldn't really have to push doctors and consultants with the matter of your health especially if you know the way that you're feeling but sometimes sometimes we do have to push <clears throat> so I think it was 2018 that I finally got diagnosed but I'd been experiencing what I would now call Emma symptoms for quite a substantial amount of time, probably five to 10 years before I was diagnosed. And um, the main thing, main thing for me was fatigue. And I didn't, I couldn't, I couldn't get it past me why I was so tired. At this point, I didn't have a stressful job. I had a very easy job. I didn't need to use much cognitive or physical function. And you know, I knew what I was doing. Um, and there were some other bits and bits and bobs that were going on. So there was the main thing I've just said, fatigue. There was um, restless legs or what I, call restless legs so when you're when you're sitting down later on in the evening ready to go to bed or whilst you're in bed your legs feel like you need to move them all the time just really irritated and you're you kind of shaking them about and and you just can't get them comfortable and it's so irritating if if you've had RLS you know what I'm talking about. Um, also, I used to get hot patches on my legs and they could be at random places. They could be at the same places all the time. Um, and I used to describe it to my husband, now my husband, like a, you know, when you've just made dinner and it's really hot on, on the plate. So you served your, your dinner up and it's really hot underneath the plate. And if you sat on the sofa and you put your plate on your legs, that heat, that burning sensation on the tops of your thighs. I used to have that, but there was no plate there. It just used to be really hot. You could touch it and it was normal temperature, but it used to burn really, really hot. Um, I used to have pins and needles in my legs. I used to have what I described to the neurologist a like a creepy crawling sensation like there was ants or spiders underneath my skin. And these would periodically come on and, and disappear and then come on and disappear. And they used to get worse when I was tired or if I'd done um, a long weekend's work or something and um, I was up late or watching a film or whatever and I was really tired and then all these different symptoms would, would come and then a couple of days later they, they would disappear. So I went to my GP and said I think I think there's something wrong. I'm not sure what it is because there's multiple things that are going on. So I explained to him the fatigue, the restless in my legs, the, the burning, the, um, the creepy crawling sensation. And his reply to me, which I thought was very, very rude, was, I think you're anxious and I think you've got depression. And I know, and you know, you know in the heart of hearts, in your own body, if something is wrong. And you know in, the, in your heart of heart whether you're anxious and whether you're depressed. And yes, anxiety and depression can cause some of the symptoms that I was experiencing. But I knew, I knew in my heart of hearts that I wasn't anxious and I wasn't depressed. Um, I used to get up in the morning every day like a bright spark 
get ready for work, go to work, no problems. Didn't have any problems with anxiety, with anything at all. Um, I would probably say that my normal anxiety level is, is what I would call, you know, normal. And some things are in your day-to-day -day life you're going to get more anxious about than others. But I knew that that wasn't the case. So anyway, I, I paused because I thought to myself, right, I'll, I'll see if there was something else he was going to say after that. And I waited and waited and waited and nothing. So I replied to him with, I appreciate what you're saying, but the age I was at the time, I said, I'm not anxious, I'm not depressed, I haven't got anything going on in my life that would cause me to be this fatigued, for one, and also cause these other weird sensations I was getting. And his reply to that was, which was even more rude than the first response he gave me, was, I'm the doctor, you're the patient. I was just shocked. I was just so shocked that someone who is meant to be in the care profession, who's sitting across from somebody who's relatively healthy, would want just off the back of not asking me any other questions, tell me that I had anxiety and depression. Didn't ask me any questions about my life at all and, and was wanting to diagnose me with that. Two, never offered a solution to that. And three, said, I'm the doctor, you're the patient. I think it's disgusting. Anyway, my response to that was, I appreciate you're the expert. But there's something going on in my body that isn't right. I'm not anxious, not depressed. There is something in my body that's going on that is not right. Can I have a referral, please? So anyway, he, he looked at me, rolled his eyes, huffed, and then said, fine, I'll get a referral sent. You'll have a letter in the post. So anyway, step one achieved, getting a referral. I would urge you... If you go to your GP and you know, because you know whether you're not right, okay? You've lived in your body for the amount of time you've lived in your body. You've experienced all these different things that you've gone through in your life. You know whether your body is not right. So push. This is your health. This is what these people in the care profession are meant to do. They're meant to look after you. They're meant to help you feel better. If you truly believe there's something that's not right, don't let them fob you off. You need to push and push and push and get yourself into a position in front of someone who maybe will be able to run some tests and be able to diagnose what you've got. And if that person doesn't know, then push for another referral to somebody else. Anyway, um, go to see a neurologist and I explain all the different symptoms. Um, and again, he says to me, yes, some of the symptoms may be MS related, but they're too sporadic for me to do a diagnosis. So I'm not willing to give you an MRI, not willing to give you a lumbar puncture, not willing to give you any more tests until they become less sporadic. So I thought, right, okay. And in my mind, I was thinking, what's the next step here? Because if I just take that as gospel and that's it, he discharges me, then I'm out of the loop. It's going to take a really long time to get back in that loop and get referred to another person. So I said to him, okay, that's fine. I, you know, I, I appreciate your professional opinion. You're, um, you're a neurologist. You're telling me that it's not... MS and it's not some other things that he he was discussing with me so I said to him after thinking right I need to think of something to elongate this process and get me maybe in front of somebody else to to find out what's wrong I said to him okay I appreciate it 
But what about my fatigue? Because I'm at a point where at the age that I was, I shouldn't be this tired. I don't have a lifestyle that, that warrants me to be this tired. I don't have young children. I don't have any children at the time. I need to find out what's making me so fatigued. So he said, okay, we'll send you to a sleep consultant. So I thought, you know, bonus. Thinking that, you know, when my head hits the pillow, fortunately, I don't have any problems whatsoever falling asleep. I will literally go to bed, head hits the pillow, and that's it. I am gone. I'm out for the count. Not anymore because I've got my little one, but I used to be completely out for the count. Lay in the same position all night, wake up in the same position I went to sleep at with absolutely no bother whatsoever. But still waking up really tired, like I hadn't been to sleep at all. Went to the sleep consultant who eventually diagnosed me with restless leg syndrome. So I thought, okay, in his opinion, my um, my restless legs and my, my restless movement in my legs on the evenings were making me fatigued at night because his theory was that when I went to sleep, it was the movement of my, my legs because my husband said I was quite jerky in the night, even though I didn't know. And you fill out for RLS you fill out this questionnaire thing that they ask you and then they give you a score out of each answer which came to the conclusion that I had RLS so they gave me a medication called Pramapexol Pramapexol is a medication for Parkinson's disease but in very very small doses with people with RLS it's meant to help those spasms in your legs that cause RLS, re relax them down so you have no problems within your sleep so you wake up fully rested. I took the Pramapexol and it was, it was alright. I didn't seem to find that it took away what I was experiencing for an elongated period, period of time. So I would have like um, about of say four or five days without it, without RLS, and then it would come back again, and then it would disappear and come back in, disappear, come back in. <clears throat> so it wasn't until five years later, so five years after I was diagnosed with RLS, did something really crazy happen that the options that I was given for what it could be really, really shook me up, shook my partner up and my family. Because they didn't know what it was until I was to have a brain scan. So we were in the May, I think, I think it was May, of 2018. And I had a day where I, I woke up and I was looking at my computer screen at work and my eyes just felt a bit fuzzy, like my vision felt a little bit fuzzy. And, um, I, you know, I kept blinking because I thought, you know, and sometimes you get dry eyes, your eyes get fuzzy and they can't focus. So I was blinking and blinking, but it wouldn't, it wouldn't go away. And then as the day continued, I would look from like left to left to centre and then right to centre I was looking across the room and it felt like when I'd look to the side and come back again it felt like what I was seeing took a really slow amount of time to to focus or come back and then I would look to the right and come back and it would take a really long time for, for my eyes to, to focus back to centre. Um, and I just kind of thought, well, maybe, maybe I need my eyes tested because I've always, I've always worn um, glasses or, or contact lenses. And sometimes I used to get quite a bad pain at the back of my eyes. So it felt like someone was really pushing at the back of my eyes. And I just 
I just thought to myself, well, perhaps I need a new pair of glasses because over, I would probably say the space of five to 10 years, my prescription in my eyes changed over and over and over and over again to the point where I thought, do you know what? I'm just gonna have contact lenses because this is costing me a fortune. Um, so I, I said to my husband, I'll book in for an eye test at the, at the weekend. And then when I got home, um, I was, I think I was getting ready for bed or something and I was, I took my contact lenses out and I was just like brushing my, brushing my teeth and messing with my, my face and taking my makeup off. And I would look in, looking in the mirror and I looked from, from one side of the room back to the, back to the mirror. And I noticed something funny, like in the mirror. And you can't really, if you've ever tried looking in the mirror, moving your eyes from left to right, and then trying to see your eyes move, you can't do that, can you? But I was able to move my eyes to the left, come back to center and see my eye in the mirror quickly move like this to the center from a left position to a center position or from a right position to a center position and I thought oh, that that's odd maybe maybe I'm seeing things or whatever so I went down to my husband in the living room and I just said to him look at my eyes I'm just going to look from left to center right to center can you just tell me if there's something weird going on with my eyes and he said, what do you mean? I said, just, just watch. Just tell me if there's something odd with it. So I sat in front of him and just looked at him dead in the eyes and then moved my eyes from left to centre and then right to centre. And his face was a picture. He just went, oh my God, do that again? So I did it again. He said, no, there's definitely something wrong. Your, your, your left eye isn't, isn't coming back the same as your right one. So what was happening was, say if my fingertips were, were eyeballs, I would look to the left. And then as I moved my eyes back to centre, my right one would come back to centre and my left one would stay there for a second and then and then slowly move back. So you look to the left and then look to centre and the left one would slowly move back. And obviously this definitely, definitely wasn't right. So I went, booked in for an eye test anyway. Um, went to a normal, my normal um, opticians. They tested my eyes and they said, I can't see anything at the back of, you know, and they did the photographs. Can't see anything wrong at the back of your eyes. Can't, you know, your prescription's absolutely fine. But I think you need to go to the eye hospital. So we'll write you a referral. So the optician wrote me a referral to the eye hospital. And I think it was the next day that I went. I just walked in the eye hospital with the letter and then they sat me down and saw me. So... They diagnosed me with, it's a long name, intranuclear ophthalmoplegia. So that's when your eyes don't move. You know, they could, when you're looking around, they could be, your eyeballs could be out that way. They could be one point in forward, one point in left, one point in forward, one point in right. And they don't, they don't flow. So when your eyes flow from left to right, they're meant to do that. But mine were doing that then that and they would only work I could only visually focus on anything properly if I had an eye patch on um, and it was my left one that was really the problem that my left eye would literally go anywhere that it wanted to go it would go left right whenever I was looking around it would just it would just stop um and it was it was just so bizarre and we they did so many tests 
in the eye hospital but they diagnosed me with that and the person that I spoke to said this only happened in a certain number of medical conditions so they said the worst one being a brain tumour the second one being a stroke the third one being multiple sclerosis so I was just shocked because as being human we always think that if we get given a list of things we always go to the worst one and my mind was focused on the worst one it was just focused on brain tumor I was thinking oh my god how I, how how is that you know this this possible what am I gonna do um, my husband was really worried and um, they said that we, we need to get an MRI scan so we'll we'll send you a referral through the post so at this point I thought because they've given me these these three things that it could be especially with brain tumor being one of them I thought right this referral will probably come through quite quickly for an MRI and um, and it didn't <laughs> at all so we were left waiting and waiting and waiting and I was calling and then I was waiting and then I was calling for I think it was over well over 18 18 weeks I think it was and um, anyway letter came through to have the MRI scan had the MRI scan and that was that was done not by a neurologist so it was it was done by the eye hospital they sent me for an MRI scan and then I had two neurologist appointments come through with two different neurologists and I thought well this is odd to have a letter with two different neurologists so I wasn't sure whether to call one of them and cancel it or call and ask I didn't know what was going on so I just thought to myself although I felt really bad for it I kept both appointments and I felt really really bad for keeping both appointments because in my heart I was thinking someone else could need one of these appointments I'm glad I did keep both appointments because I went to the first appointment to see a neurologist I'd never seen before and he was vile he was absolutely vile I knocked on the door walked in and he hardly looked up at me he just told me to to sit there in the chair that was next to him and he was looking at the computer and he was really dismissive about everything he didn't really ask me that many questions at all he said oh I can see you've had something wrong with your eye um, but from looking at you I can see that's better now and that was basically it and he sent me on my merry way and if I'd have only had that one appointment I think I would have gone absolutely schizo crazy with him because it's just not acceptable to treat somebody like that and to just look at them and say well you look like you're better now and then send you away what is all that about it's just ridiculous why are people treated like that I mean I've I've spoken to so many people and read so many stories about GPs, consultants, treating people, human beings like that, when they've got something wrong with them, when they've clearly got something wrong with them because they can see their history on the screen, they can see what they were diagnosed with previous to seeing them, they can see that they've had an MRI scan. He didn't even discuss that with me. So I'm glad that I kept the second appointment because my second neurologist appointment with the other neurologist 
she was lovely she was so so nice i feel so lucky to have to have met her she she was really lovely so she explained to me my mri scan what was on it assured me that it wasn't a brain tumor nothing of that sort was was found whatsoever she assured me that it wasn't a stroke and then gave me the news that i had ms and she she went through different you know things with me to say that she um that i had ms did i know what it was she sat there and she spent loads of time explaining it to me um explaining the possibilities of what might happen what might not happen medications that may be available and she she said to me that the MRI looked, some of the lesions on there looked active and ironically the day that I went to see her I was having a lot of weakness in my left arm so the way I described it to her was it felt like if you ever carried a, a shopping bag if you've got too many bags you've got one pulled over your arm like there and then another one in your hand and then by the time you get you get home you you put it down you take the bags off and your arm feels really weak um so it felt like i'd had something on my arm here that was really weak and she did a few uh tests with my hand so um grip pull push and she found that the the difference between my left side and my right side was quite considerable in terms of in terms of grip, strength, um, push, pull, that type of thing, um, which correlated to the scan, the lesions, and them being active as well. So she then got in touch with some of her team and arranged for IV steroids for me to alleviate that a little bit or suppress the MS attack a little bit to help my left hand side clear up. So from the point where I was diagnosed, it was the October of 2018. So my eye, my eye issue was either, I think it was May 2018 and then it took until the October to get diagnosed but bear in mind five years before that I went to see the GP and a neurologist that told me it was too sporadic it's just a shame I think and I know with these neurological conditions they're really hard to diagnose they're not they're not easy to diagnose at all and we don't I, I understand consultants don't want to just diagnose and put labels on people willy-nilly but that's a hell of a long time to go without being treated for a neurological condition that possibly potentially could have been not halted because you can't stop MS but it could have helped the lessen the progression of it and it's just a shame that it took something major like my eyes to spur on a diagnosis. I do think that MS diagnosis and consultants and neurologists have, have come on a lot more over that short space of time because of the research and the understanding of MS and what symptoms it gives and what first symptoms that people have so I think the, the diagnosis is better now than it was even a short space of time ago. But still, I've had a GP who told me it was anxiety and depression. I've had a neurologist who told me that my symptoms were too sporadic. And then I've had a neurologist who basically dismissed me, looked at me and said, well, you look okay now those three okay I'll, I'll negate the one that says it's too sporadic because he actually helped by by referring me to somebody else so the GP and a neurologist that is not acceptable if you have ever been treated in that way you need to push 
for somebody else. Push your GP to be seen by somebody. If, if you feel that this person isn't helping you, the neurologist, a consultant, whoever is not helping you, push to see somebody else. At the end of the day, this is your health. This is your life. They're not living your life. You've got to. And if you don't feel right and you don't feel well, then you need to make sure that you push and pester until you get the help that you need. That rant over. Um, oh, I'm really tired this week. Um, okay, so since since my diagnosis in the October 2018, I haven't really had that many symptoms or relapses up until recently, over the past kind of 12 months. So I, I, would, I would think myself as lucky for, for that. So I just had my my eyes go crazy. I had a weakness in my left arm. So I was told that they were two, two relapses. Previous to that, I'd had RLS, tingling sensations, pins and needles, um, skin sensations like heat, heat patches, um, Fatigue, obviously, is the main one. And one which I forgot to mention to you, I think they call it le meat sign, if, I pronou if I'm pronouncing that correctly. And that's when you look down, and I've got it at the moment. Um, that's when you look, I'm not gonna do it because it sends an electric shock, but when you look down, you put your head down and flex your neck. And when you do that, it feels like you've had an electric shock go all the way from your neck all the way down your spine all the way down your legs down to your feet which is really weird sometimes painful i noticed it first when i was in the shower and you you look down to to wash your feet or whatever and you just get this electric shock and i've got it again now which i don't know I'm still not clear, even after all the reading that I've done, I'm still not clear on whether it's a relapse or a flare up or whether relapses and flare ups are the, the same thing. I just know that when I'm tired, when I'm a bit stressed out, I start to feel residual symptoms of old relapses or old flare ups. Fortunately, my pins and needles in the majority of my legs have gone. Restless legs I get really sporadically, really sporadically. <clears throat> um, I've got this Lermite sign back. Residual symptoms that I've been left with are after my left arm went weak, I've got a little bit of a, a, a ratcheting sensation. You, you probably can't see it here but it's normally when you when I pick something heavy up and then I try and move my hand up and down or side to side and it kind of jerks a little bit like that but in my left I've got all my fingertips on every one of my fingers is numb with pins and needles and that that's never gone away that I think that's prob possibly going to be there forever So I didn't have any relapses from 2018 until 2020 when my son was born. And pregnancy was absolutely wonderful. Literally cleared up everything. Every residual symptom that I've ever had, every piece of fatigue Every feeling of fatigue that I've ever had completely disappeared. Why, I don't know. I wish they would find out why 
and whatever happens in pregnancy I'll take that without being pregnant and I'll get rid of all the other symptoms I had I wish it was that easy I'm sure I say they they wish it was that easy and so I didn't have another relapse until I was seven months I think seven months postpartum and I started to get a, a weakness in my left again and I called my MS nurse and she said you know that yes that's a relapse and then I started a medication called Capaxone which my body rejected then I looked at different medications and went on a medication called Plegridae and that was it was okay I suppose the it's self-injected so you you inject that into a, a part of your body every 14 days um, I stopped that because I just felt really horrible fluey icky for a period period of time out of those 14 days and I didn't think it was fair to my son or me to to feel that way but during the the me coming to the end of finishing my plegrigy injections I had symptom after symptom after symptom and I had I had itching which was severe um, all across all across my chest all across my collarbone my neck up towards my head over my shoulder was itching like like I was covered I was like I was covered in mosquito bites if you've had ever had a mosquito bite before you know how much they itch and it felt like I'd got them all over me and I was itching and itching and there was no point in me going to the doctor because there was no rash and they would have asked me if there was a rash they weren't going to know they probably weren't going to know what it was so I called me my MS nurse and she said yes that's a classic classic symptom of MS so I just ended up holding something really icy on it cold patches cold cans of coke that sort of thing and it would it would almost confuse the nerves into telling them that they weren't itchy anymore and then I got a weakness in in this this arm and my hand and you know all that started to come back and um, just headaches fatigue um, with the heat patches again just it was almost like all the old stuff that I'd had kind of flared up again but this itching was really new so I stopped the plegridate and then a few weeks later I had a relapse on my right hand side and um, that was really debilitating because it started in the same way as my left hand side it was that started itching really badly itching all over my, my collarbone my shoulder my chest my my neck my head and that sort of went numb then and it sort of spread all the way down all the way down my my right arm into my hand all the way down my right right torso right leg into my foot my foot had pins and needles and it was numb um, I would struggle with my left leg walking I, I had no hardly any movement it's worst hardly any movement in my, my hand and my fingers hardly any grip Fortunately, the majority of that has cleared up now. I did have IV steroids, uh, three days worth. And I don't know whether they've helped or not, but thankfully it's it's getting back to normal now. I've just got some skin sensation issues um, and coordination issues. So my grip's fine, it's just my, my coordination. So that's that's my diagnosis and the things that I've had so 
I'll run through all the different things that I've had if I can remember off the top of my head without having them written down. So I've had itchiness and when I say itchiness it's itchy, itchy to the point where you want to itch your skin off. Um, help with that anything cold. I've had pins and needles. I haven't found anything that helps with that. I've had limb weakness. I haven't found anything to help with that. I've had chronic fatigue. I haven't yet found anything that helps with that. Even getting loads of sleep, loads of rest does not help with that. No matter how much rest I get, I am still super, super fatigued, super tired to the point where I could be anywhere. Put my rest my head, close my eyes and I would just go to sleep. I've had headaches, and I mean headaches that will not go away with any any tablets at all. So paracetamol, ibuprofen, codeine, stronger tablets, which I won't mention. But nothing will take away that pain from that from that headache. I've had what's called ice pick headaches, which feels like someone has got something really sharp in the top of your head here and hit it and then you get like a shooting pain down either side of your head down to your ears. I've had head banding where it feels like you've got something tight and sharp around your head in any any position. With headaches as well, I've had what I would call wave headaches. So for a second, second to five seconds, I have this wave of like pressure, pain that would go across my head. It feels like someone's crushing it and then it releases and then it disappears. I've had Lermit signs. So when you get the, the electric shock down the, the back of your neck, back and down into your legs. Um, leg weakness. I've had my eye thing, intranuclear ophthalmoplegia. Restless legs. Heat patches. Sorry if I'm repeating these. I haven't got a list because I can't, the only place I can put a list is on my phone, but I'm filming on my phone. And I can't write at the moment with a pen. I'll put all the symptoms that I've had in the description box. That'll be easier <laughs> than me trying to remember it. Confusion, brain frog, I've had that. Um, speech problems. Although I don't feel like I have. My husband says that I mumble sometimes. I've had... Things like what my husband would say would be anger flares and apparently it's a thing. I've been onto the MS groups and there's people with MS who feel like since they've had their diagnosis <coughs> that their patience is not as good as it was and their they can go from angry to happy, from happy to angry in real quick succession. So I don't know whether that is an MS thing or whether it's because you've been diagnosed with MS. I know that some people who think that that particular one about being angry and frustrated is more likely to be from being diagnosed with MS them be caused by MS. Almost like when we're diagnosed with MS, because it causes all these different problems and issues for us that we either haven't accepted MS as our new life or we won't accept MS as our new life. I don't know about that one. I'll have to have a think about it. 
but anyway that's my that's my diagnosis that's me rambling on again every ms sorry every person with ms will have a completely different set of symptoms that happen in a different frequency at different times for a different length of time period so it's really difficult for a community of people with MS to say yes if you've had that that and that you've definitely got MS because one person might have had those three or five symptoms and you might have experienced three or five completely different symptoms but still have MS, still have the same disease. But it's almost good in a way because by seeing what other people experience, if it then starts to happen to you, you have more of an idea that it could be MS and not something else. But I would always say, if you feel like something new is happening, call your MS nurse first to discuss it with her, see what she thinks, and then call your GP. Because it might be completely disassociated from MS and it's really important that if you're experiencing something, something new that you don't just automatically put it down to MS because it could be something different that could be treatable for you once it's once it's been diagnosed. So if you have had any different symptoms to me comment below. Let's see what everybody's experiences are with particular symptoms. Also, if you've had particular symptoms and you've got a hack or a trick to try and soothe those symptoms or make your life easier with those symptoms, then also, also comment below because we need to help each other. We need to help each other make our lives easier, make our lives more simple. And um, that, I suppose, that's that's what I'm here to do. That's what I'm trying to do. If there's anything, as per usual, if there's anything that I either haven't explained or I've forgotten, or you think that it would be useful for you to know, if you've got any questions from this video, questions about MS, if I've experienced it, I will reply to you either in the comments or via email if you email me I'll do a video about it if you want me to do a video about it if it's something that I haven't experienced of course I will do some research for you and I'll do a, a video for you on that put a thumbs up on the video remember to subscribe and click the alert button for more videos and um, stay healthy See you soon.